I'll bet that just about everyone has a memory from when they were a child of an old handsaw that just hung on the wall of the garage or barn or shed. No one ever used it because it just didn't work well. Nobody ever thought to sharpen it, so it just hung there to rust and rot. Just like any other tool in the shop, handsaws need to be sharp and set up properly in order to function well. So as you're learning to use handsaws, it's also important that you learn to maintain them just like any other tool in the shop. When your plain irons and chisels get dull, you sharpen them. Saws should be no different. Yet most people are okay just throwing them away, mailing them to someone else to sharpen them and being without them for weeks, or just using dull saws. Now don't get me wrong, I spent a good number of years as a professional saw doctor fixing and sharpening hand saws for other people. And it was a good little side hustle allowing me to support my woodworking hobby. But as a woodworker, I couldn't imagine being without my hand saws for several weeks and not being able to do any woodworking. I mean, as we've already discussed, hand saws are the most important tool in the hand tool shop. And saw sharpening is not some kind of black art. It's no more difficult and takes no more time than sharpening a plane iron or a chisel. Plus, contrary to what the internet might have you believe, it's impossible to ruin a saw simply by sharpening it. Teeth can always be recut and the saw can be resharpened. However, it's important to understand that there's a very big difference between maintenance sharpening of an already well-tuned saw and restoration of an old abused saw that's seen very hard times. Maintenance sharpening is something that anyone can learn to do in about five minutes. Let me tell you a quick story. Several years ago, I was demonstrating handsaw sharpening at a woodworking show. An eight-year-old little girl was watching me very intently, so with her father's permission, I let her take over. I showed her how to hold the file and how to file the teeth, and she took over and sharpened the entire saw. Of course, she attracted the attention of a whole bunch of people walking past the booth, but she just kept on filing. When she was done, I told her dad to try the saw. He was astounded, and so were all the people who were watching. No one could believe that this eight-year-old little girl that I had just plucked out of the audience had just sharpened a handsaw. However, the little girl seemed completely unfazed. Why? because no one had ever told her that sharpening a handsaw was hard. So she just took the file and did it. Now to be fair, the sharpening wasn't up to professional standards, but the point I'm trying to make is that maintenance sharpening of a saw is not difficult to do. Restoration of a saw with Austin Powers-like teeth, however, can be extremely challenging. Therefore, we're not gonna cover that kind of work in this course. Our focus in this course is on using and maintaining saws, not becoming a saw doctor and bringing nearly dead saws back from the grave. If you want to focus your time on restoring old saws, that's totally fine, but it's not the focus of this course. In this course, our focus is on working with the saws, not on them. So in this section, we're only going to discuss maintenance sharpening. If you start with a good saw, with well-shaped, evenly spaced teeth, maintenance sharpening is all that saw should ever need. If your saw has teeth that are in need of major repair, I'm going to suggest that you choose a different saw to work on for this section of the course. So what saws are good to practice sharpening on? Lots of them, really. If you have an old saw with well-shaped, evenly spaced teeth that are just dull from use, that's a good saw to work on. If you have a moderately priced new saw that just has dull teeth, that's a good saw to work on. If the only saw that you have that requires sharpening is a high priced premium saw that's just become dull from use, that's a good saw to work on too. You heard me right. I said high priced premium saw. Here's the thing. 
Remember what we said earlier? It's pretty much impossible to ruin the saw just by trying to sharpen it. If your attempt royally botches the teeth, you can still send it back to the maker. They can recut and resharpen the saw for a small fee. But what this saw has in common with the others that I mentioned is that it already has well-shaped, evenly spaced teeth with the right geometry. So all you need to do is touch them up and give them a new edge. So it's highly unlikely that that minimal amount of filing is going to ruin the teeth to the point that you have to send it back and have them recut. But if you're that apprehensive about taking a file to your Lee Nielsen or Bad Axe saw, here's an alternative suggestion for you. Go to the hardware store and pick yourself up a hardware store back saw for about $10. These saws typically are not going to have the induction hardened teeth that I mentioned earlier, but they're also not going to be sharp. However, the teeth will be punched with nice even spacing and the geometry will be right. So they're really no different than some of these other saws that I talked about where you have nice evenly spaced well shaped teeth that have just gotten dull from use. Use your hardware store saw to practice your maintenance sharpening a couple times. After a few times jointing and filing these teeth, you'll be ready to take on maintenance sharpening of any saw in your collection, including your high-end saws.